What's going on? It's the Rap Nerd, and I'm running a few errands, and I figured I'd set the phone up and talk about it because this has been a big thing over the past few weeks, honestly. With Oppenheimer dropping on Blu-ray, Chris Nolan has been on a second tour run, it seems like, to do more interviews talking about physical media and how streaming is killing the industry. And I actually agree with him, but I wanted to take like a deeper dive into like the exactly why and how because i don't think i've heard it mentioned or or seen anybody report on it so this is just my two cent do i know if anything these any of these things are factual no this is me spitballing and i'm a business marketing major so i can kind of read in between the lines of what's going on as others probably can too not to say i'm some financial analyst and i know all this shit but just being real so the reason why streaming is killing cinema or is the death of cinema as many call it is because studios are to blame they are being greedy as fuck and that's why streaming is dead they saw what netflix did and decided to jump into the game and that's what's really making the industry feel the pressure and the pain that we've been you know seeing with the box office and all of that i don't believe that a movie studio can be a streaming service i don't think the two connect well and a little history as to why right so netflix been doing a thing I, I, I like netflix to me is is the goat streamer and i feel like that is the only streamer that really should exist that and amazon prime because neither one of those are, are studios so i'm like those two should be around and, and at the beginning of streaming those two were the only ones around and of course you had the free ones like tubi and pluto and all of that right like those are fine but it's the, the the addition to these studios creating their own shit that made it a problem. So, as we know, with the, the, the pay model with Netflix, right? They pay the creators up front and they keep all the back end money from whatever they make. I'm not sure what they make from views or, or whatever they do, but I know they're making something because they don't want to present them. And usually when a company doesn't want you to know how much they're making, it's one of two things. They're either not making shit or they're making a ton of money and they don't want you pocket watching. And in Netflix's case, I believe they're making a ton of money just off of a few things I'm about to say. So when they first came, they had a lot of licensing deals with with studios, getting all kinds of movies on their service. And they didn't really start making their own content until, when was it? Because I I think it was the the, the movie... uh, Bright, I believe. I think I think they dabbled in shows, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not really a TV show guy, so I don't know that side of things as much as I do in film. But Bright was their first really like big original movie. And I feel like from that point on, they've continued to build their content up, right? So now they have a massive amount of content on their app. And I feel like this has all been a scheme of theirs from the beginning, but they haven't said anything. But anyway, they've had this no ad tier for a while you know it's it's, it's just been straight streaming no ads or whatever and just recently i believe was it late last year or early this year they added an ad tier to their service right because i think information has shown that people don't mind ads as long as the price is cheaper i mean we've seen the boom of tubi we see the boom of pluto tv a roku tv all of these free services that people are a part of so we know how it goes. I don't think a lot of people care about that. So I think Netflix knew that or either saw that and was like, you know what? We should add an ad tier to our shit because we have stuff that no other ad, no, no other app can get. We have a lot of original content that no other app can get. So if we do this ad tier, not only can we get more subscribers, but we can boost revenue. And sure enough, the revenue was boosted almost a billion dollars more in one quarter. I believe it said... The, finance, the revenue went up 70%, if I'm not mistaken, almost a billy. So all of that back-end money that they're keeping from ads is in their pockets, which is crazy. And who knows what they were making before. So a lot of money is funneling through Netflix. And what I feel like ends, ended up happening and is studio saw what Netflix was doing early on right once netflix started popping off it was like okay this is a little streaming service they're not going to do shit and as the year and years and years kept going and netflix kept building itself to be this powerhouse of a streaming service studios won it in right and i believe the first domino block tipping over was disney announcing disney plus especially after buying fox now they have hulu which was 
I could say the next tier of uh, streaming service that I feel like was good before Disney bought it because that was one that I think should stay around because it, it kind of it, it really honed in on like TV and cable shows, right? Syn you know, uh, what is it? Um, syndicated uh, TV shows. But now that Disney has it, I don't, I don't believe in Hulu at all anymore. So Disney buying Hulu. And instead of them just putting all of their material on Hulu, they made Disney Plus. And I think that made studios nervous as hell. You know, Disney already is monopolizing. Excuse the light. This shit is crazy. Um, they're already monopolizing as it is on a lot of stuff. But studios, as studios do, as business people do, got greedy. And I want a piece of that because I feel like once the, the pre-order for subscriptions went up, the numbers boomed. Other studios saw it. And was like, yeah, we're going to want a piece of that. And from that point on, we get to 2020 when the pandemic hit. Um, studios panicked and were like, okay, well, look at Disney, right? Look at Disney. They just got a whole bunch of subscribers before this pandemic hit. So now we need a service. And that's when we came up with Paramount Plus, Peacock TV, um, Max, and whatever other... I think NBC, I think NBC is Peacock TV, but all of these streaming services came out of nowhere. And now it's a shit show. Because studios are again having a hard time deciphering how to run business from being a streamer and a studio. And at this point in time, I don't believe that they know what they're doing uh, at all. I don't believe it. I think Netflix, Netflix I think streaming was its best when Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu before Disney took over, and the, the, the free apps were just the streaming services. I feel like that was the best time because the studios didn't have to think about streaming. It was all about filmmaking. And again, people stream more than ever because studios crumbled and started being streamers. You know? Like, because I'm seeing some people trying to blame people. I'm like, you can't blame people for what they're given to consume. If studios are willing to dump their their content, hell, not even content, if studios are willing to, like, put movies on their apps a week after the theater release to have more content or, <coughs> you know, have creators create more content specifically for apps instead of filmmaking, what do you expect people to do? People are going to go with the option, the easier option. And that's where we are. That's the issue. I believe that these other students, these streaming services need to reel that shit back in, right? And and, and just cut the shit out and do what Sony is doing for with Netflix, where Sony releases a movie to theaters. Once it gets digital, it's on VOD for however long it is to see if they can get some more revenue from, you know, purchasing the VOD. And then after that time, it hits Netflix. They don't have their own streaming services. I think that that's the best route. I think Universal does the same thing with um, Amazon, I believe. That is the best route to do. Everybody wins. Everybody eats. We don't we no longer have to figure out like studios, per, I, I say. I have to figure out like, hey, we need to pump more shit to our streaming services to keep subscribers or to, to, to uh, make subscribers, you know, rise. Because they're now hitting a point where there's only so many subscribers you can get, fam. Like the window for, for building subscribers is not big. It's not. And this is why I say Netflix is perfect for that model because they're not a studio that relies on box office. When you rely on box office and you're making these hundred million plus dollar uh, movies, like you know, yearly, and you're making multiple ones, you gotta rely on the box office. And it's why now we're seeing movies made of of a, of a high caliber, um, and they bomb because they don't have any money to to promote to promote the films. Or they feel like I don't want to promote it because we're not going to get the return back. You know, let's just put it on streaming. It's not helping anything when you throw a movie that was made to be theatrical and just put it on streaming. You lose money. Like I think about Blue Beetle. Like it was made to be a streaming movie, and at the last minute they switched it up. 
It's not going to make money if you're not going to market it. The movie was like $100 million, like, cost. And you just throw that bitch on streaming? Ridiculous. Warner Bros. is a shit show in general, so I, I don't even know what they're doing. But, um, yeah, the industry is suffering because studios want to be greedy and be a streaming service and a movie in the filmmaking studio at the same time. They don't work. The revenue and what you're playing with is way different. It just is what it is. Netflix has this shit figured out and sewn up, so leave the streaming to them. Prime has whatever they're doing sewn up. I mean, they have their original content and they, they're a platform where you can actually buy digital media from. Let them be. HBO Max, I actually like the service a lot, but leave, let that shit go. Peacock TV, let that shit go. And again, none of these people are going to do it. Who am I? But honestly, that's the only way to get the movie industry back to what it is, you know? I've been watching a lot of films from, you know, the 2015, you know, prior. And it's just amazing how many films that we used to get in studios that we no longer get. Last night, my wife and I watched The Grey from 2011. You know, the movie with Liam Neeson, I think, uh, Frank Grillo's in it plane crashes and it's this group of people trying to survive in Alaska and they're getting hunted by wolves, right? We saw that in theaters like opening weekend and just looking at that film, we don't get shit like that anymore because the studio is becoming, a studio, that because theaters are becoming less profitable because of the shit studios are doing like studios are killing themselves by opting for streaming before theatrical releases so that's all I gotta say about 12 minutes of me talking, but I, I, I really hope something can happen because in the words of Christopher Nolan, it's scary for, for, for filmmakers, you know, me being an upcoming filmmaker myself, I, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining if, if I ever, you know, create, not if, when I create a film and it only can be streaming, that's cool, but I would love to get a theatrical shot. I feel like that's the ultimate goal for most filmmakers out there. Like, it's like I want to make a movie, but I at least want it to be seen on, on the big screen because that's where a lot of us fell in love with film. Oh, and the last little thing I had to say before I get out of here um, is another thing that studios really need to do. And this is not saying that they don't do it at all, but I feel like there are tours who are, who, who, who have, I guess, um, have a track record of doing good as far as financial financially box office and making creative leave good content studios really have to let these these people create i'm seeing way too many auteurs opt for going to places like netflix because of artistic control and again not saying that studios don't do that but i feel like studios are kind of trying to like they're trying to do it the cheap way for instance like they'll give uh, an up-and-coming director that you know has the the the, the, uh, the creative um artistry that's really popping who's like you know on on, on the up on, on the come up really they're not they're not solidified as a bona fide star like some others but they they get these these directors these writers to do this and they can pay them cheaper opposed to paying somebody like David Fincher a nice fee to make something like that. Like it, it, It's crazy to me that The Killer, I think it's a masterclass film, is on Netflix. It's crazy to me that Del Toro is creating so much great content for Netflix. It's insane to me that Mark Scorsese is last two joints were both technically for streaming because I mean if I'm not mistaken Killer of the Flower Moon is an Apple TV exclusive and the Irishman was for Netflix um it's crazy to me that Zack Snyder is making a two part series space opera fucking fantasy film that has a lot of shit going on um Comic Con Funko Pops, all this type of stuff, right? So, again, not saying that's the, that's the root of the issue, but if you really want shit to pop and make things worth going to the cinema for, I would definitely say start including 
the are tours that you banked on in the past that are still good money now. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Give me your points. And um, of course, this is just a conversation, a discussion. No malice if you disagree with me or any of that. But just give me your, your, your words down below. And what do you think is the solution to keeping the theaters alive, man, and, 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 and big screen filmmaking alive, you know? So if you let us kind of contact me, sure like and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, thank you. And until next time, peace. Rap Nerd Productions, no capping, that's word to mommy.